It can't easily be traced in the history of post-independence Uganda that workers spent over 35 days away from their workplaces. It also cannot be traced easily in the history that the IMF predicted a recession for sub-Saharan Africa, but now both facts seem true. The immediate effects of it are now haunting businesses both big and small. In this online Zoom call organized to discuss the future of Uganda's economy between Tony Otto of Stanbic Bank and Patrick Peter Ture, a leading businessman, the indication in the air is clear. When I look at my hotels now, we had to close down the hotels completely because we are bleeding. If you are spending almost 500 million, 600 million on salaries almost alone, the two hotels, then you've got to make sure you're making 700, 800 million per month to keep ahead of the curve. Mm. Those kind of numbers are scary. Mm. So the cash flow you have maybe can keep you running for two months or three months at any given time because you have creditors. But right now, the, 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 you've got to pay your creditors and you've got debtors who are supposed to pay you. Your debtors are not play, paying you because they are holding out. They're in shock. It's a freeze. Right. Mm -hmm. Shock on the mm -hmm. demand side and mm -hmm. shock on the supply mm -hmm. side. Mm -hmm. Both sides are feeling this shock. And so both sides are frozen. But here you've got costs. So the sooner you stop your costs, the better. In 2018, a survey by Ubos found that there were an estimated 1 million former employees in the economy. 700,000 of them are contracted and remit NSSF. The number in the informal economy is speculative, but generally believed to be more. The debate now has shifted to how to protect these jobs during and after the lockdown. Arnold Kwesiga works with the Uganda Consortium on Corporate Accountability. He says an economic stimulus is the quickest route to securing jobs for workers. So the silence of, let's say, the government and its different agencies towards addressing that limits the, 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 the capacity of this employer one to meet their obligations with their employees, but also to meet their employees' uh, uh, obligations either with banks and loans and other taxation regimes that they need to be meeting. So where are we as, and that's where you see a number of countries have put in place measures. How do you stimulate the economy in such circumstances? How do you help small and medium enterprises stay afloat? And especially now like Uganda where the SMEs create a huge, uh, 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 a huge bank of people of, 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 of sectors that really are responsible for the growth of the economy. There are already public indications of mass layoffs in tourism and hospitality businesses, and it is generally believed that these will extend to other businesses during the lockdown. Raymond Mujini, NTV.